Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's uh, In Search of Tomorrow Watch Party for Flight of the Navigator. I'm always, I'm Andrew Dalton, I'm here again, joined by the amazing Lon Strickland, our superstar, and the fantastic Joey Kramer. Welcome, Joey. I'm not sure where you're hey. on. I think you're down there. Well, there, there there's yeah, Joey for me, yeah, and there, yeah, there's I'm... Lon for... Oh, <laughs> Okay, the chat are all saying hello. So that's really cool. So welcome, Joey. It's amazing to have you back. Thank you for joining us for this film that's one of, if not the most requested films of all the 80s sci-fi movies. I've got everyone in the chat saying uh, hello to you. I've got Lizard Man, Mr. Furzel, Icy Matty, Sparky John. They're loving your background. We've got Sharon in there. We've got uh, Green Raptor watching us on Facebook. Everyone is welcoming Hannah Rose artist. It's so much love in the house. Lots of Hello, love for everyone. your background. <laughs> it's a good one. Look, I am the navigator. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and Knight Madsen and Colin are joining us as well. How wonderful that is. So we're going to go through uh, this movie and talk about some of your fun memories making it, some of the insights into it, and just generally chat about mm-hmm. other stuff as well. But what I would like to do, just before we get started with the movie um in the sci-fi well horror the general 80s community we lost a legend this week and i think there's no other word to describe him than an absolute legend i'm talking about mr richard donner so you know from all of us here hearts really go out to a wonderful man who with movies such as uh, superman omen lethal weapon the goonies oh defined genres will greatly be missed but what a legacy to to leave behind absolutely exactly yeah set the That's... benchmark for so many great great genres uh, across the board uh, he he had an impact on so many of us who grew up with mm-hmm. his cinema and uh exactly. yeah richard richard will be missed i was excited about his new lethal weapon i was bummed about that because he, he was apparently in development on a new one yeah i i'd heard a bit about that too it was uh yeah, I think I think Mel and Danny Glover were going to make the, the you know the resurgence or something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. We'll see if it still happens or not. So let's get on with the show anyway. It's very sad about about Richard, but let's push on. We're going to have a great night amongst ourselves here. So if everyone queues up uh, the movie. Uh, the sync point should be basically the same for all the releases within a couple of seconds. So on the count of three, if you can press play, please, everybody. Three, two, one, press play. There we go. And on my release, I see the icon of the 80s, the Disney, Disney castle coming in. I've got the DVD version here, so I'm going to have to catch up. Uh, okay. It ends up with a promo for Disney DVD. Oh, wow. So we're seeing here, Joey, this was this was all filmed in Florida, oh, this sort okay. of bit. Oh, no. Was I supposed to push play to? I thought I was going to watch it on the thing here. That's okay. Um, Oh man, did I tell? Totally... Okay, so I yeah, I thought it was going to come up on the screen and no. I was going to watch it at the same time. Okay, so I'm supposed to push something. I, I'm sorry, everyone. I totally That's dropped okay, the ball. I <laughs> think we okay, might have Jim. to start over. <laughs> no, we're all right, okay. Jerry. We're we're looking at the uh, what appears this, to be the scene with the dogs of... doing the frisbee championship. Right. Yeah. So, did you send me a link to the movie, or was I no, supposed to just no, 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 no? I didn't. But we can we can sort something out for you, I'm sure. So bear with me. Let's okay. see what we can let's see what we can do. But uh, we'll just discuss the movie while we're sorting that out for you. So we've just seen the dogs okay. sort of jumping around doing the frisbee championship. Were you there for the full day of this, or was this just a sort of second unit pickup? Or uh, I didn't I didn't get to see any of the dogs except uh... Bruiser, of course. Um, I mean, what a great opening team though. <laughs> the dogs are fantastic. Uh, gotta yeah. love it. Gotta love it for sure. Um, it's a lot of great slow motion footage of these dogs. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the tongue just lapping, you know. <laughs> I know. I know. And some of the great, like the near miss, you know, he's like, just, up, just like, just nicks the edge of the frisbee. And oh, oh yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. the magical moments they captured there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 
And they probably spent a lot of time shooting, I imagine, with these dogs. Oh, yeah. I mean, that would have been a fun day for sure. Oh, definitely. For definitely. Sure. For sure. Going to, going to this. But this was all shot, I'm assuming, in Florida where you were shooting the, the stuff with the uh, other actors as well. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was nice because we got to, you know, it was three, three months in Florida and then the uh, <laughs> infamous month in Norway, <laughs> mm-hmm. which uh, some probably know about uh, thanks to the documentary and then and also kind of one of those trivia facts. But, um, That's very all the cool. inside of the spaceship here, right? We'll get to that. Part. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was watching, watching the dogs kind of just uh, bouncing around yeah. at the moment. Which is very cool. Actually, let me see if I can do this for you, Joey. I don't know if and Joey's referencing I... uh, Life After Navigator, which is one of the mm. most touching uh, documentaries about the making of a film I've seen in many, many years. Oh, it's, it's wonderful! Really, really beautiful film. Absolutely Thank you. wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really proud of it. Um, it's neat. I've had a lot of uh, people reach out, and uh, um, I'm glad it. I'm glad it turned out so well. There was, I mean, a great balance between. Um, my life, and, and then also the, uh, the the amazing movie magic behind Play the Navigator. There's so much cool stuff that, that uh, happened, and it was neat for me to watch the documentary because I learned things that I had no idea about. So mm-hmm. it was great. It was great. That's very cool. So we've got some quite a question already from uh, Night Madsen in our community saying, "Did the movie seem darker or scarier in tone once you saw the completed product after editing, using, etc.? What were your thoughts and feelings? If so." Um, well, I, I, looking back on it, uh, when I first watched it in the premieres and stuff, I, um, I mean, it was kind of a whirlwind. Uh, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't remember a lot from them, but looking back on it, it's, it's neat because I've tried to show it to some, uh, you know, younger family friends and especially that beginning when David's walking through the woods there, it's yeah. a little creepy and there is a lot of kind of this looming, o- ominous, looming, um, uh, you know, presence or something, the shadow of the blimp, right, which will be coming up here, I think, shortly. Yes. Uh, uh, so That's all these, been... this kind of foreshadowing, um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, there's, it, it's actually, I think that's something that, that people have commented about as well, was that it was like, there's, it was actually a little bit scary, like, you get taken away from home by NASA, and, and mm. uh, can't figure out what's going on and, and the scenes in the hospital are super freaky and um and so the first half yeah it's an unusual movie in that it actually paints nasa as the bad guys for once because normally they're the kind of the good guys in the movies i know <laughs> i've talked about that it's i mean nasa really have guns i, I don't know they had m16s and everything right they're like oh yeah it's, I, it's an interesting thought armed nasa guards well, I've been to yeah. Kennedy Space Center, and I'm sure they probably had some armed guards somewhere. I didn't see them particularly, but I'm sure they probably had them. Uh, yeah. They probably had them there somewhere doing something. But um, the interesting thing that probably a lot of people may don't always notice when you watch this movie is the house that David lives at when he's sort of young is quite a luxurious, expensive house on the waterfront. You assume his parents are possibly... It's quite a big house, and the parents are quite probably financially well off. But when... Mm-hmm we see in sort of the 80s and you reappear, they're not living anywhere near a sort of nicer house in a nice area. It's kind of under a freeway. So you assume maybe they lost a lot of their money potentially looking for David. That's right. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was definitely the goal, I think. Um, and it worked. I mean, they, you know, they made Cliff and Veronica just look so distraught. <laughs> the, poor, the poor parents, man. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it's got so many layers to it. I mean, you can appreciate it as just as a kid, the kind of the, the fun sort of aspect. It's an adventure. But then as you go into it, there's a lot of multi-layered stuff for the parents and the, the wider impact of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was always pretty well grounded too. It always felt like we were in a real world with real people, you know, and it just kind of resonated Um on that level and kind of pulled you into to, to David's world and his family. And um, it's, it's, that's actually a real hard thing to achieve. You know, it, it, I think because this is a, an exceptionally well-made movie um, there's a lot of nuances that you get between 
the characters and the dynamics that you don't typically see these days. I think films have changed quite a bit, especially in terms of pacing. Yeah, exactly. Did you um, did you spend much time with the dog that played Bruiser, or was he was he sort of hanging around set a lot? Or I loved Bruiser. Um, it was actually a girl. Was it? Little man, fact, it was. Uh, her name was Jessie. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, little Jesse. Uh, amazing dog. Uh, I was um, uh, I was a skateboarder at the time, and and um, I used to have a picture. I, I kind of I just posted some old set pictures on on my Instagram there, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I used to have a cool picture of us. We were like a right tic tacking together. So if you take a skateboard and you kind of go back and forth and you gain momentum, right? It was called okay. the Tic Tac way, way back when, 80s skateboarding. Uh, and uh, and Jesse was like hopping, literally hopping back and forth while I was hopping back and forth. And there's a great picture of us together. But um, yeah, I mean, those dogs are, are really smart and super cool. I always like to that for sure. That's yeah, very, very cool. Shepherd. Your mother in the film was played by uh, Veronica Cartwright, who a lot of genre fans know from the Alien franchise. Had you seen yep. Alien, Joey, going into the movie? I'm trying to remember. I know that I saw Alien. Um, I'm not sure if I saw it before or after. I, I tended to be, I was more of like a uh, Return of the Ninja, Revenge of the Ninja. I was all about the ninja movies, Bruce Lee. <laughs> uh, a lot of war movies, you know, old like Uncommon Valor. Uh, Chuck Norris movies and things yeah. like that. So um, yeah. I wasn't actually quite into the you know the sci-fi till till later. Um, but uh, but after I remember watching it after and I was like, oh my god, because she had told me a story about Alien and and uh, you know walking onto set not really knowing what to expect and there's just plastic sheets everywhere and these big buckets of like i guess they used real pig blood or something like it was mm. it it was full on uh wow. wow yeah and uh if i'm remembering correctly it's been a long time and um uh but it, it there were some shots like in the final cut it's really just a kind of a splatter on her face but i think <laughs> if i remember they actually had quite a few takes where it was like blood everywhere just you know, like soaking everyone and stuff oh, like wow. that. So, wow. And then it just came back. It's like, well, no, it, it's, uh, yeah, I guess if he just popped out, it would just kind of be a quick splatter. So. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted, they wanted you the know, full range. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get all soaked in the pig's blood, and then when you see the final, it's like, oh, they did that one take. Okay. Yeah. Less is more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Joey, a question I do have for you is when you were on set, obviously you must have made friendships, and were you closer to Albie or Matt, who both played your brother? Well, <laughs> Albie, oh, you little guy, you. <laughs> he, I, uh, I, I wouldn't say that I was closer to Matt. Um, our scenes were, I mean, uh, so with, with younger Jeff, with Albie, they were, you know, he was a little brat, and he was a little brat, and uh, and um, admittedly, he, he, you know, maybe wasn't. We had to talk about this actually at the Freeman family reunion. You saw some in the documentary if people had seen it, or uh, so it was really great to catch up. And he's like, I know, I was just a little thinker. I was, I, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, I get to work in a movie. You don't have to go to school. It's like, oh, great. So um, he really was like that that uh, kind of evil little brother yeah and well, then, of course, on screen <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was perfect it was perfect right um so uh, quickly so going I, back and, sorry joey just know, to interrupt for a second just with where yeah. we are in the film at the moment we're sorting oh. out a copy for you but we just have the scene where you've returned to your family home was this shot in sequence or out of sequence with did you see it originally as sort of in the 70s and then you had to see it again in the 80s to react or um, okay, so this is where where we pull up out front. We, have I dropped? Did we drop Jeff off at the Johnson? This is where you've come back, uh, woken up in the woods in the eighties, and you've come back to the your house, your parents' house, and the old couple are living there. Oh, it's already there. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. 
Jeez. Okay. Um, this is that real Twilight Zone I, mo moment in the movie. Right. Right. I think we did. I think we did it all. Um, you know, ar around the same time, we, we would do all the the um, the 1978 Freeman, you know, family shots, and then yep. uh, and then they switched it up. I, I do remember that that crying scene was pretty early. Well, no, actually, it might have been a little bit later, to be honest, um, because I remember one of the things that helped me get sad was I was missing my friends. And so it couldn't have been too early on. Um, and I wish I, I wish I remembered that. I'm going to, since we, since we missed it, I'm so sorry that I don't have the copy. That's, that's okay. We're going to get one sorted for you shortly. So, Just... um, so one thing with me, when, when David's like, you'll never see your ninth birthday, I promise. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that was actually a little bit of foreshadowing because David never sees his ninth birthday. He misses out because he disappears. Right. That's oh, right. I never caught that before. But in, in some ways, another thing I do wonder about is if, if, if we talk about how they talk about time travel movies where you have the main timeline and the secondary timeline and they do the whole Back to the Future branching off because this is now effectively branched off into a new timeline. Mm -hmm. Did your character's disappearance, because it sounds like the parents took a much stricter line with your brother once you disappeared, did right. that make him into the decent? Is he basically going to be, if in the restored timeline where you didn't disappear, is he going to be an absolute d uh, bag <laughs> when he's 16? And you see, when we met him again, right. yeah, is he is he just gonna grow up kind of being nanny nanny nanny, nanny right? Yeah, <laughs> the same little bratty guy, or did maybe David's disappearance change the trajectory of his whole uh, yeah. life, you know, life path? Hmm, that's an interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, I think he was. Man, I think he, I think the casting was smart in that way because it's very polar opposite. Um, the older version is very disarming, and he's very, he's very gentle, and you just yeah. he feels wise and because. Uh, well, yeah, he felt yeah. awful, you know. Yeah, I had to put, I had to put these things up on, you know, up on trees every, you know, uh, every Saturday, right? It's like, ah, oh, you know, I had to go to school, and then every Saturday I had to put these things up. I always kept them, right? I really like those scenes, though. We we had a those are those are pretty cool little brother connections. I I never really had a brother, uh, but uh, but uh, I yeah, really, I have I, really I have like two, it. and this movie was a special movie, I think, in that way as well mm. it was about like yeah. brother loves yeah. yeah here we go we're just at the moment now where your parents in the 80s have just been woken up in the middle of the night to say that their missing mm. son has returned after eight years where are we so a, f a funny thing I, th I do talk about it in the documentary but um the the, the little conversation between david and the uh, and the police officers you know uh, you want to move that for your paperwork I, uh, for those who don't know, I actually, when I was incarcerated at one time, I was driven by a couple of fans as navigator, these correction officers, and they pulled out that that script and we read it in the back of the police car. When I was <laughs> 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 traveling, traveling from place to place, I had an appointment or something, and they pulled it out. They're like, oh, David, you know, he's the president of the United States. And, and I remembered all the lines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, That's kind of cool. wonderful that you would have yeah. something like that kind of yeah. with you wherever you go to kind of maybe yeah. kind of protect you in a way yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's cool yeah. it's really cool and again i recommend anyone it, who hasn't it, seen your documentary sees it it is it's it's a wonderful i found it uplifting by the end i think you've really achieved mm -hmm. something joey and you should be thank very you. proud thank you um we're, we're really proud of it uh, and then there, right, when Bruiser, the old Bruiser, has to lick my neck and I pass out, right? We're probably a bit past that, but that that older dog was a little bit di difficult to deal with, and they had to put like like smeared like beef juice and stuff on my neck <laughs> to try and get him to, to like lick me. And <laughs> here comes the beef juice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have to be Some sort of the something because that dog just yeah. wasn't as friendly. We just didn't have Ooh. the same connection and. <laughs> I think the dog didn't want to bite well, it's it as well. funny because you see it. it. It's like yeah. we're we're trying to, you know, the I think Veronica or Cliff are trying to feed it behind my back, but then that didn't work. So then we're like smearing, you know, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the joys of animals. 
uh, and, and the things the audience never knows too you know you just you, everyone just like accepts what they're seeing and the strange yeah. methods yeah. at work to, to pull it off <laughs> yeah yeah so we're just uh, seeing the scene where you're in the um sort of in the hospital and you're on the the, the trolley being pushed around and they're shining torches right. in your face um, and yeah. This, yeah this is one of my favorite scenes coming up to be honest i can i can watch it and it's like not even watching myself you know that poor kid he's there and he's like i mean it's it, I, people ask me you know how i did that like those tears brimming and and just and I just remember feeling like it was it was happening. I mean, I yeah. felt like I had a great connection with Veronica, with my mom, and Cl you know the family dynamic of us was really was really tight. And Randall Kleiser, of course, made just an amazing set to to work on. It was always just so um, it was like a family. So it really I love those scenes because so, uh, because I mean. Even though it was, you know, 35 years ago, it, I can still feel it, um, and that's that's why I love the craft of acting. Is you can just, you know, I mean, you can be these parts and play this stuff, and, and mm. it's pretty magical. What I like about uh, your parents in this is they seem. I know they're, they're wonderful, wonderful actors, but Cliff is an everyman father, and that's what makes him so relatable in this. I think as a as a, mm. as a character it's 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 great but sometimes i do feel when they show someone's father and they've got the physique of arnold schwarzenegger or something and they just happen to be this dad who's super buff and you know a, like a superhero right. in, himself it, it it take it's it damages the reality of the situation somewhat yeah Ooh. yeah and i i think modern films have gone in that direction much more now and you see that that's very common to see basically you know chiseled yeah. kind of picturesque actors in these roles yeah so, no, there's an authenticity to this movie that uh that i miss it's jeff's shirt inside out or was that the fashion at the time that's the fashion that's lady's <laughs> fashion <laughs> it's right and then you roll the cuffs up so that they're like right side out and you get that little and it's cool color yeah you get that yeah. flash of color and oh yeah i had shirts like that I, I totally <laughs> did. I rocked him. <laughs> well, he's, got, like, he's got a great know. combination of things with his glasses and yeah. he's kind of yeah, nerdy, yeah. but he's cool. Yeah. Just we talked about yeah. that after it was like <laughs> at the, we did the screening at the Egyptian theater and uh, and had a little panel and got to talk to the fans after and, and that was the one thing that Matt definitely brought up. He's like, man, my my outfit was top notch. Like it, was, <laughs> <laughs> it, it hit eighties to a T. Yeah, and everything. It was great. Well, Joey, next time you speak Thank to you. Matt, can you please tell him that Hannah Rose, artist, one of our community members, said that uh, puberty treated Jeff very well, glasses and all. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Joey, I was impressed with with how you'd aged. Honestly, I mean, yeah. all things considered, like you're you're pretty. Uh, you, your form I, is like pretty. You're in your forties <laughs> now. Or you, it's pretty yeah, I'm, man, forty seven. Yep, yep, crazy. Yeah, I've got yeah, I've got some pretty good genes thanks to my mom and dad. Um, and uh, yeah, I. Uh, I I'm not really sure. I mean, I I used to kind of joke that that uh, the plethora of booze and drugs just kind of kept me in a, like a, a cryo frozen chamber <laughs> for years. <laughs> and so now that I've stopped, I've actually started to age more than... <laughs> now you're on the normal uh, routine. Right? But uh, yeah, I mean, um, but in all seriousness, I just, uh, I yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. And uh, I've been taking a lot better care of myself too over the past you know, five years or so. That's good yeah. to hear. Yeah. Well, Hannah, Hannah says you also look great, Joey, as well. So, and you look a lot younger. Oh, thanks. So. Thanks, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was, I was also really uh, taken by some of the music uh, in in the documentary. And I was wondering if you're if you're doing studio stuff or if you're recording some of those songs um, that you've written. Mm. Well, no, I just. It, they were really, I wrote them at a time um, that they needed to be expressed um, and kind of, so 
I've been I I have had a lot of requests for people, you know, to put put them on something. Um, I thought about going in that direction maybe, and and actually I took a year of music at, at the university here. Um, uh, but it's like anything, you have to you have to kind of commit to something and go with it. I mean, I still I still play guitar and try to play a little bit of piano as well, just to kind of broaden my skill set uh, as far yeah. as acting. Well, I've done a little like music that. production myself, and what I found is it's when you're collaborating with a lot of other people, it has <coughs> really good results, you know. So it's mm -hmm. uh, it's like anything, you know, painting with sound or whatever. Um, yeah. But I but I, you have a really nice. Um, voice and it's it, 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 it i think if you were to record uh some of those songs in a studio that that could be pretty special Sorry. yeah i i would like to i think it would be neat uh to do i when i wrote them i was like oh yeah and i have a few other like lyrics written no music yet but um i thought it'd be neat to you know release them somehow and then every time that somebody they purchased the song that the money went towards um you know a charity or totally uh, something right to it would be my way of of giving back to the programs that help me that's always uh forefront in my mind as far as success and and things that um that um i mean i feel pretty successful now and happy and just the more the more that comes the more that i can give back and uh, so we'll see and my dad was a pretty amazing musician and songwriter, and I'd always uh, thought it would be cool to cover some of his songs, play uh, his, and have a little music project called Kramer vs. Kramer. Cool, cool. That's yeah, some, sometimes revisiting like family creative projects can be uh, yeah. healing or whatever. You know, it can be uh, therapeutic. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And we're just seeing right now, we're seeing um, right. you waking up in the middle of the night with your brother who's been reading or studying for an exam or next right. to the bed while you're in the oh. hospital. Um, oh, nothing. I just, I just remember. Oh, you're the I, only sane person in this place. That's right. I, re I remember. Like a million tests on you. <laughs> yeah. And now we're seeing they're trying to break into the ship with blow torches and everything known to man. We can't get yep. in for whatever reason. No, nope. no, nope, they can't. And speaking of the ship, Joey, I want to. Uh, I think we, we discussed this last time when you were on that. We mentioned that uh, one of the prop ships from the movie was uh, sort of rotting away in in Disney World on the back lot tour, and mm -hmm. uh, they repurposed it. Well, I dug my photo up from when I went uh, several years ago, and to put this on the stream, we'll be able to see this as well. That's me with. Uh, what appears to be one of the uh, one of the prop ships there. I think the I don't know about yeah. how everyone I don't know about how everyone how everyone feels. I kind of wish they just left it to the flight of the navigator ship. Myself. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. They covered it up, and you, it's almost unrecognizable. It's like you know. Yeah, <laughs> there's definitely mixed emotions. Uh, I had plans to go do a comic con in Orlando actually last year. The year was oh, wait August August last year. Um, didn't work out, but I really wanted to go and check it out. Um, it, you know, it's, yeah, it, it would have been nice if they did something at the same time. Um, I did have someone mention that it's kind of cool because it's a little Easter egg type, you yeah. know, type deal, even though they painted it red. And when I actually saw it, I thought they kind of maybe modeled that after the ship because it looks slightly different. I think they added a, a back, they, kind of more of a square back to it. Yeah, they they added the, bits of stuff to it, and I think they filled in some of the lines. And well, I wonder if there's like licensing issues or something that they had. Maybe. Well, it's Disney, Disney. I mean, it's it's at Disney World. I, you'd think you'd think they'd be fine with it. And just but, but does Disney own the film outright? Um, as so as far as I know. <laughs> The whole thing with PSO owning it and then going bankrupt and selling it and Disney picking up some. And, and then I guess, um, so Disney owns all the rights in North America. Right. If I, if I remember, but nothing international. So, mm. um, yeah, because it's on Disney Plus here in Canada and yep. Disney Plus in the States. But if you go anywhere else, it's, um, it's on different platforms. Yeah. 
That's right. It's not on Disney Plus in the UK. But here we are. We're seeing you now just sat outside with your parents where they're asking to take you to, to NASA. Right, with the, the cool Led Zeppelin shirt and those amazing yeah. boat shoes, those, docking, those brown docker boat shoes. <laughs> <laughs> And you're playing some kind of a very old what? sort of handheld computer game. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. Oh, man, I wish I could see it. Somehow. Yeah, well, okay, we, should sure. for you in a, we should have something for you in a moment that you'll be able to stream. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Right. Yeah. Um, and this one, you know, yeah, right on, Dad. He's like, yeah. You know, I love that line, Matt's like... Right on, Dad. Yeah. Like, well, I'm <laughs> sorry. You don't want to know what's really happening. Where David's been. What all this unusual brain activity is. And most of all, why he hasn't aged. That's right. That is what you want, isn't it, David? Yeah. Well, quite the memory for the uh, lines of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Jonathan Sanger as the doctor. He was great. You know, he's, yeah. uh, he's, the, he's the writer, right? Uh, no, producer. He was a producer. producer. Yeah, yeah. He was a producer, yeah. Produced That's the cool. Elephant Man. And... A lot, yeah, a lot you, of the community are, are saying that. here, it's yeah. very much like a Twilight Zone episode. Yeah. This movie. Mm, the movie? Yeah. yeah. There is a Twilight Zone element, but I it think is. once we get into the ship and the Paul Rubens stuff, it, it just becomes a, a kind of a different animal, more in the Disney movie territory. It's something else. I, I, you know, it's, uh, well, because originally the, the original script, which we did a really cool script read, a live script read on Scripts Gone Wild. It's a uh, collection of actors and filmmakers and stuff that, that read scripts for charity. And we did play to the navigator and, and we did the original script. And so there was this whole other element with the masters and they were, you know, going to destroy Max because he had disobeyed them to try and help me go back in time to, get back to where I was and interesting and uh yeah there was a so it was actually quite a darker film and then I guess when Disney picked it up they, they kind of switched everything up and, and so there was like uh, a higher it, alien a uh, order or like a higher alien yeah. political and uh vested party yeah. that's cool you'll see on the on the on the ceiling of the ship you can see in a couple of shots as they pan across the ceiling there's like a circular thing almost looks like a Mayan calendar and that was actually a, a timer that was ticking off slowly. And I'm like, what's that? And it's like, oh, that's, you know, and Max is trying to kind of avoid the topic because he realizes that he's running out of time to get back and they're going to, you know, destroy him. And, cool. Um, but, yeah. And, and then at the very end, I actually meet up with a young Carolyn McAdams at a McDonald's, right? We take the boat over to McDonald's. When I get back and I, see a girl and I'm like hey is your name Carolyn she's like yeah I'm like oh you're gonna be a real knockout when you grow up <laughs> so, here we are just a quick, you're gonna, a quick you're gonna have purple hair you're gonna have purple hair right here and she's like you're weird <laughs> it's like oh yeah and then, uh, just got yeah. to see where you're I in think the... we... sorry we just got to uh, see where you're in the room with Carolyn first coming in where you meet Ralph and the music oh, right, video okay. you're watching for some inexplicable reason there's a shot in that music video that's shown on your TV that actually isn't in the music video. I heard about that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, maybe it was an extended version of the video or something. That's oh, crazy. They used to have those, right? There was, yeah. I remember Duran Duran, you know, Girls on Film and Hunger Like the Wolf. There was always these extended versions of the video that you could watch late night on Friday night videos. Or, <laughs> you know. Interesting. Yeah. Did you uh, did you hang with Sarah Jessica Parker much or on set? Oh, just during our scenes, yeah. I I um we were I mean we were different age. Uh, didn't really get to know each other that well, but I I mean I really I loved those scenes. They were super fun. Uh, she made I mean she's a great actor, and, and uh, you know even back then you could see that that uh, she was going places for sure. Cause yeah, just the yeah. natural, just then. The natural, um, you know, patter and stuff. I don't know. Just it was like. I mean, it was it, was, you know, written well, but it, she uh, she really made it come to life, and I think that we worked really well together. And of course, yeah, the, you, yeah both of, like, both. Come of you on, Ralphie, baby. Have great energy. On. You can do it. 
Yeah. <laughs> I love the eyes. You guys have great, like, consistent glances, you know, that stay. You know, sometimes yeah. you, you notice those kinds of things uh, the, more, the more you study acting. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, that's, it's, it's about those, those connections, right? And sometimes, I mean, often more can be said in the, in the, in the spaces of silence. Uh, than in the actual dialogue, right? I mean, just sort of taking those moments and uh, really connecting and stuff. So, yeah, she, yeah so um, true. That's good. That's true. This is actually the second uh, sort of 80s sci-fi movie that came out aimed at a, a ki- kind of a kid's audience in 1986 that yeah. had a, a robot at NASA that pivotally altered the plot of the movie. <laughs> yes. So in Space Camp, with Jinx, oh, right. who was another NASA robot who alters the plot of the movie quite substantially in the way that Ralph does for you. So the question I've right. got for our chat is, who's better, Ralph or Jinx? <laughs> See what they come up with. That is the question. We'll, we'll see. We shall see. Robotic assistant, labor facilitator. And what was the original... Um, his original name was Fred. Freewheeling, freewheeling robotic, oh, something device or something. Oh. All I'm going to say is if Stallone cuts out the robot in his director's cut for Rocky IV, I'm going to be disappointed. You know, happy birthday, Paul. You don't take that away from me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the movie doesn't make go. sense without the robot. <laughs> Three wheel. I found I found my original script here. Oh, cool. Oh. Yeah, Three wheel and robotic efficiency device. <laughs> he delivers mail and all the supplies. <laughs> Oh, and that's how, and she said, and I'm like, oh, how does it work? And she said, oh, it's really easy. You see this chart? There's a number for it in each department. And that's originally how I figured out how to get to the hangar. Wow. Um, wow. Right? Because I, that was Because she shows be, me. Yeah. She shows me how to punch. Oh, you punch in the number here and it goes to the department. I guess I could have handed you this junk myself, but I thought Fred would make it more fun, she says, right? Well, like, Joey, oh, you may wow, have just okay. changed some some theories on the internet. It was a theory I had. I looked it up and a lot of people thought the same thing I thought, but you've shown from a deleted moment in the script that potentially it's something different because we believed it was Max remote controlling Ralph for well, you to get in it. Yeah. And that's, that's where it went after, because if you listen real carefully, he's like, get in the Ralph unit. Right. You can yeah. hear it really muffled. Right. And so, then he hops in the Ralph unit, and then and then yeah, he's remote control. You know, he he directs it there, so it makes it easier. But originally, um, yeah, she she kind of you know inadvertently told taught me how to escape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's very okay. he's very similar to that control. I don't know if you had them in America or in Canada. I think you probably did. It was a toy in the eighties called a big track. In fact, I think it might even be one of your room in this. Oh, with the uh, single claw? And it has no, it's like, a, it's like a tank and it had like a, like a calculator pad on the back and you could make it go forward so many moves and turn and stuff. Oh, and right. Runs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very Does this movie cool. have any, any merchandising? Were there toys released for this? They, you know, it was... I mean, they didn't do a lot of that back then quite. I mean... Um, and you know they talk about it in the in the in the doc a bit. The the, the promo maybe wasn't as <laughs> in depth as it could have been. There probably could have been some really cool stuff. I mean, there's you know the frisbee options. Um, I mean, people still now tell me. I I, I don't know if you saw, but um, we we I did a little uh, signing recently, and there's a, a custom pop of David Freeman. Yes, okay. I saw that on your Instagram. Right. Yeah. So, um, and well, with the uh, internet, a lot of these licensing deals are happening now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I thought it would be cool to have a Puck Marin, uh, have a Max. You know, you could have a Max Pop, a Puck Marin, and even the ship, right? You could have it like 
floating on the steps like, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That'd be cool. It, yeah, it'd be pretty cool. So we'll see. There we go. And then, we yeah. shall see. Yeah. I'm I mean, scanning, in, scanning your brain at the moment. Yeah, scanning oh. the brain. Um, like, um, right. We're in Seeing the star charts, to... all the star charts that are inside your mind. How that's get impossible. Far? How far is it from Earth to Phalon? Oh, 2.2 solar hours. I can try and follow along with the script and see Einstein theory. But David, where is Phalon? Is that where we're at? Kind of? What's, what, what lines are coming up right now? Just These are totally uncharted systems. Our computers don't contain this information. <laughs> yeah, it's a great moment. Let me out of here. Let me yes. out of here. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to the next scene where, where uh, I'm looking out the window. Am I looking out the window? That's right. You're looking Carolyn, out the window. That's Carolyn right. comes in. She's like, hi. Hi, Carolyn. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, I will say that David had a real thing for stripy t shirts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Come on. Yeah. That, but that feels very iconic now. It does. Well, stripy t shirts. Like, sorry. It would have been, if, you know, it wasn't TV, it would have been uh, a big no no because, you know, yeah. you know, created all that. So. But that's impossible. I want out of here right now. You think I can't think I don't watch TV? Wake up. David. Yeah. Uh, the chat's oh, going crazy know. at the moment. They would like. You've never they, been they locked away your... from some place they... and put in some awful place you hate. Yes. Every time, every time we had to go, I had to pack up and move all over again. Oh. Well, I've just had moment are all saying they want your NASA baseball cap. I think, I think if someone was selling them, they, they'd, they'd sell a, a fortune at the moment. I know. Oh, I yeah. I would still love a version. I would still definitely love. Uh, that satin one, you know, I mean, that the satin one with the gold writing is so cool, but I do have one here that my friend, uh, yeah, there you go. my That's friend, cool. uh, my yeah. friend David sent me because uh, he was a big navigator fan as well. And, um, and he, there we go, yeah, and I saw him, you know, with a post wearing it. And I'm like, oh, I need one of those, so he sent me one. That's and then, of course, we've got the top. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, I love it. Oh, the same. My sweet friend Adam made me this guy. So. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, now it's like the puck man's wearing the NASA hat. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, once that guy shows up, it's like, I'm sold. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> I just call my parents. Tell them what's going on. Oh, no, we're way past that. Now, so. No, we're just I'm going at, to see where I'm here. That's it. I'm at the Sarah Jessica Parker uh, flirtatious moment here. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. You know, you're cute. Did a girl ever tell you that? Just my mom. But I don't think she counts. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get that look on my face. I love it. That's so cool. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, funny. And then the, waking, the, yeah, go ahead, Andrew. Just waking up on the bed, sort of it in the right. morning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, waking up shirtless. Yep, yep. The for the girls, spot. for all the girls out yep. there. That's yep. right. That was, that was the spot. Yep. That's it. We just we just heard Max kind of whisper to you to get in. Yes, I'm here. Help! Right. Yes, I'm coming. And this stuff is kind right. of tele telekinetic stuff happening in your mind. Yeah, yeah. He's he's talking to me in my in my head. So, right. Um, so I'm just reading here too that uh, I guess originally I'd opened up the Fred unit to hop in, and there's a Big Mac, large fries, and a Coke. We could. I just saw a Coke, uh, like a, a, cu a cup of Coke in it. So I'm oh, assuming cool. that possibly possibly is that. Also, something I just noticed: uh, Ralph or Fred has a number five on the side of him. So I'm assuming. They've probably got multiple of him on oh, the base yeah. somewhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. We also had Johnny Five oh. not too far away from this, right? So, like, the number five associated with robots was, was a thing for some reason. Yeah. Well, because it took them four, four tries to figure it out. And then <laughs> yeah. number yeah. one was always the dud. Number two <laughs> got a little bit better. Yeah. Number three was like, okay, it worked for you Getting know there. an hour and then blew up. And number four was like, okay, we got the kinks. Well, no, not Minor quite. Tweak. Number five. Yeah. Five times the charm. 
Yeah. Were you, were you at all jealous that you obviously you didn't get to ride around inside the robot in this scene in these scenes? I did. You know, I did get to ride around in 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 Ralph. I oh, actually cool. was just going to mention mention that because um, there were a few parts where uh, that got cut as well where I had to. It had a little joystick, like almost like an old Atari joystick. Okay. And so I had to actually pull up, and there was a little slot I could see out. And there was a couple of scenes where I pull up out front of the, I well, where I pull up out front of the hangar, and the security guards almost catch me. They they kind of cut it. If you, I, you know, it's hard. I don't want to tell all the behind. You know, I don't. There's a really move. neat shot when you're inside the robot where the camera kind of like rotates around you as you're looking through the the slit. Yeah, a really I, neat camera move. And uh, wow. yeah, now I mean that would have been close and, and they would have just had the side door up and stuff but um yeah there was a little little remote control thing so we're just getting to the moment now where you're sort of seeing the ship for the first time was did right. you see the did they i know famously going back to when we spoke about goonies earlier they famous the director original famously kept the ship from the kids to get their real reaction in seeing it for the first time did anything like that mm. happen with you with this I I really have a feeling, uh, yeah. I um, yeah. They, it was it was pretty much hidden, pretty much hidden. I, it's uh, it's funny because some things I remember so specifically and like yeah. every detail, and then some are are a little bit of a blur. So, um. But uh, I mean, the ship is so cool. Yeah, oh, it, I mean, it, it really a, is. It's got... a pretty, as far as you know, spaceships go. It's pretty cool. Like, yeah, you even see, to you this see, day, uh, you know, you see a lot of stuff afterwards. Kind of uh, copy the design a little bit. It's there's you know there's something very organic and alien about that sort of that eyeball yeah. shape. Like the, yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It's yeah. it's the fact as well the ships almost very similar to kind of like a transformer in a way because it can manipulate itself and become other shapes oh, yeah. etc and yeah. i i think it possibly had more than just a couple of forms we see in the in sort of the movie that it can possibly change in some other shapes as well but we yeah, do that, have I... a sorry i was going to say we just got a question from our community here from onzi welcome yeah. back onzi who's been absent for a while great to have you back uh, can you ask joey this hi joey so glad to have you here with us love the movie and life after the navigator I always wanted to know, how did the kid end up in the ditch when the spaceship was in another spot by the electricity poles? What do you think happened? Why, why do you think uh, that David ended up in the ditch and the ship got caught in the... I think it's explained from my memory. Well, so... Yeah, so what happens... I think, so David falls in the ravine and passes up, right? Looking for uh, Jack. That's right. Um, and the ship... Uh, happens to be close by or, and it's like oh okay so here, here's the one that's not awake he won't even remember uh so i'll just you know uh whatever work on his brain a little bit put him back where he you know where he belongs and then when he puts david back it's eight years later obviously because the fragile human body can uh, withstand time travel and on his way leaving he looking at some flowers, uh, you know, looking at daisies, oh, ha, ha. Um, and runs into the electrical towers. And that's when it knocks out all these navigational systems and, and then Max has to connect back with David and get the information out. That's cool. we're, on, we're, on, we're, we're on the ship now and just taking note of the incredible uh, detailed design and work that went into yeah. the interior of this uh, of this mm. spacecraft. And that that would lead again. I'll save the question we have from another one of our amazing community members, Sparky John, which is when you were shooting this because the surface of the ship is basically all reflective inside. Was mm -hmm. it logistically a nightmare where they were like, "Oh God, the camera's in there," or this is this shouldn't be in mm. shot? Well, it, it was actually a pretty amazing set. Uh, it, it, they, you could take walls off, you could take ceiling off, you could take, take, take parts of the floor away. Um, I think because there's so much uh, texture on the interior that it, it didn't really 
uh, there wasn't too much worry about the reflection. And, um, and the interesting thing as well is that you can, if you shine light from the outside, it becomes reflective. If you shine, if you take that light away, it's actually see-through, um, which, mm. uh, yeah, so it, it's, uh, yeah, they, what a neat text I don't remember. Came up with. Yeah. It's so oh, effective. yeah. I mean, so effective. really cool. Really cool. It, it is. It still holds up to this day. This is an old movie and like yeah. they don't do they don't do this anymore. They this would all be CG. Yeah. I mean, the I you know, I always wanted to keep the, you know, that set and, like turn it in, you know, build it, rebuild it in a garage back home and and uh and have it. It's pretty pretty incredible. Um, so cool. You can you can definitely tell it's NASA because they've got a manual for everything. They've got a manual for yep. when a precocious child breaks into the hangar with the alien spaceship that they have to tick all the boxes on. So it's uh, <laughs> definitely Holy NASA. shit, it's an alien. No, it's not an alien. It's the kid. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because they're also, they squeeze in a couple of spots, and even in a Disney film. Oh, don't take any shit, David. Yeah, you're tall. Okay. So cool. It's just it's it just looks so lovely. This film it's just shot so. Navigate. So I detect numerous alien life forms approaching. Aliens? Where? Oh man, this an alien. This human being. So a, a question I've got for you, uh, Joey, is yeah. um, obviously Max is voiced by the amazing Paul Rudens, who everyone knows best probably as Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. Um, I must, did, were his lines recorded before you recorded your dialogue? Were they played back to you on set? Or was it some reading it? Or were they recorded after? And have, and have yep. you met him? It was all after. Um, I worked with Tony Urbano. He was the puppeteer. Uh, and, and his partner, Tim Blaney, did you know, puppeteer and a lot of the other creatures, or all the other creatures. So Tony and I would did the lines together. And, uh, and like I said, it was actually... A, a different movie, uh, the ending especially, and we had to go back and reshoot. And, and um, there's some spots where, if you look closely, I uh, apparently if you, if some people don't I really think know, I know what you're going to say. I've is it your them, hair? It is. Yes. I, I, when I watched I, this the other night, there was a couple of scenes near the end of the movie where your hair is just very slightly different. Yeah. So I, I, we'd finished filming. I went home. I cut my hair. I. You know, I, as I said, I was a skater kid, so I bleached my bangs all blonde. And as you whatever. said. <laughs> uh, so I had to wear wigs for uh, some of the reshoots. But back to the uh, Paul Rubens, Peter Herman, is that um, I only met him once very briefly doing, um, um, you know, voiceover stuff. Um, so, and, and not at the same time. He had finished his session and was leaving, and I was. Uh, just coming in for mine, and and we met really briefly, and then Randall was like, "Do you know who that was?" And I'm like, "No, oh, yeah. like, oh yeah, that's Peter." Like, yeah, yeah, so it was pretty cool, pretty cool, awesome. Yeah, that that also adds a nice like certificate of authenticity on this movie. You know, as a kid, when you hear Pee Wee's voice, you know, I feel like, "Wait a minute, I know that voice." You know, yeah, it was really yeah. exciting when when we oh, were yeah. like, "Oh wait, this is like kind of a Pee Wee movie now." Exactly, but yeah. but equally, you weren't alone in the um, in this way of producing eighties things where you were speaking to sort of an, an, an inanimate object or something else like that. As I know, for the first series of Night Rider, David Hasselhoff, the first time he met William Dan Daniels, the voice of Kit, was at the Christmas party, and that was halfway right. through shooting the season. So, <laughs> yeah. So they had just, oh. yeah, just had somebody, the script supervisor, whatever, reading the lines off. Right? We've got the amazing yeah. shot of the, the ship coming out of the hangar now, which it still looks just so beautiful. And, and this is That's a first perspective. Amazing. This is stuff they... That they, is. Yeah. yeah. They never do that yeah. anymore. Not to ruin it, but it's great. I mean, the, the mirror action and the, the small wall and the, I mean... Yeah, I remember being there for that, and I didn't quite understand the way, right, with the camera perspective. And then it was like, oh, okay, yeah, of course. When you stand back and you look, like I could stand behind the camera and you'd see the ship and all the people standing, and you're like, oh, yeah, it looks 
big. Yeah. Like even just even in, in person, like you can you can kind of squint and you can see the way that it would work. So. We're seeing the scene where you're actually weightless at the moment in the ship. It was obviously a brief moment. Was oh, it right. was it as uncomfortable in, in the harness as as many people say the the flying harnesses? Yeah, it it was. I mean, they were pretty uh, rudimentary back then. I think uh, they weren't. They, they didn't have the greatest materials and stuff that they do now. Um, it was pretty uncomfortable. It was like basically like a body cast, but we didn't actually end up using it much. There's really only the one scene where imposter yeah. could feeling and kind of start to float down. Otherwise, we just, uh, you know, I just kind of stood and pretended I was weightless and brought it came down. We had also planned, started to try and do things where they actually use prosthetics and to stretch my face out and like, you know, so that it was actually super flat. And I just said, oh, I think I can just do it. Like, right, so. That's, that's really wow. cool. You just morphed my face. Yeah. What, what are you doing? One one thing I have noticed that I've seen, I'm assuming they did that was quite nice is there's bits where you're looking out for lack of a better word the sort of the view screen at the front of the ship. Were they mm-hmm. sort of projecting something in front of you that you could see to react to? Yeah, absolutely. It was all. Um, I mean, now, like we said, it it would all be green screen. It would all be tennis balls looking at, and and uh, so it really made this world easy to immerse yourself in because uh, everything was there. Right. Even though yeah. it was a set, it was still there, and and uh, they would project. I think maybe sometimes uh, it was a blank screen, and I had to imagine because they didn't have the, the the shots yet. But if I remember, like all the underwater and uh, skimming across the Florida Everglades and stuff, those were all I remember. Those it was all projected up there. So. That's that's very cool, and it it, yeah. it also adds a nice element as well because you, what you can see is when the uh, shots are being projected in front of you, they're reflecting as they would around the ship, which of course they wouldn't mm-hmm. have done if they've been imposed. So it's quite nice you see it's all the reflections of what you're seeing behind you. Which yeah, is a, which is a I, 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 I love the little detail of the, the the seat sending in a couple like segments because you're a child <laughs> looking like yeah, you're like yeah. From, from yeah but can can you fix the seat? Oh shoot. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah we're good. Yeah. What's yeah. what's that seat as uncomfortable as it looks for the most part? The actual bit where you you know, yep, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, I mean, I wasn't lounging around in it necessarily. I'm I'm guessing if uh if we were on a longer trip and I needed to sleep, it probably would have morphed like the yeah. stairs into some sort of comfy, comfy little bed, right? <laughs> Yeah. I'm just—I I just mean from a filming point of view. You know, you were sat in it for hours at a time, possibly while you were doing scenes. And no, no, That's no. Cool. I don't remember it being uncomfortable. It was—I mean, that was—it was just so much fun. Mm. I, I, right, all the little things would pop up out of the floor and do, and like the the, the uh, hand controls were there, and they would light up. And I mean, it was. It was really a dream come true for a kid. Yeah, it's a total dream come true. I love it. So it's it's so amazing. You, you don't think about those things. But I mean, it's, it's, now that I'm, you know, pushing fifty, maybe yeah, my butt might hurt a little bit more. I'd be like, oh, I don't want to sit on this plastic for this long. But when you're twelve and thirteen, you're yeah, like, woohoo! I can sit here all day. This is great. Because yeah, I, I often compare this movie to Never Ending Story. Uh, which has a similar kind of like dream come true vibe for a kid feel to it and to learn that you were on the set of that movie uh doing some stand-in work and got to experience some of that was really cool to hear yeah it was one of my first yeah like extra and then the stunt double thing you know i I dove into the garbage at the end getting chased by falcor and do you remember uh wolfgang uh, peterson on on set uh i not specifically okay interesting yeah Unfortunately, I know. Yeah. The other the question I've got is when they were filming the interiors of the ship, since it's all polished chrome, was there yeah. a big thing about people not touching it and putting fingerprints in various places and sort of sweaty hand marks? Or no, like that? it, I mean, uh, I don't think it actually was affected that much by, by that. Mm. It, 
Because so, again, uh, the uh, again going back to because I watched it fairly recently it was Night Rider, the nineteen eighties show. They um, the carving highly polished. Now in high definition, you can see where someone has put their hand on the glossy paintwork, and there's you can oh, see a lot right. of handprints all over it, and it shows up. I just noticed in it, again, I've watched this in high definition, and on all the surface of the interior, there's no bit I've seen where someone's put a sort of a sweaty hand mark on the right. sort of the, the mirror finish. Yeah, well, I I mean, I vaguely have recollections of, you know, the kind of, I don't know if they were fiber cloth or whatever, keeping it, you know, keeping it somewhat clean. But I think that um, it was a different kind of plastic. It was, it was a mylar, but it was very thick. I mean, it was durable, so sturdy. You could stand on it and, I mean, it didn't break. It was, it was thick stuff, so. Yeah, with some um, of this uh, stuff, there's crossover with the auto industry where they'll go to the auto companies that create mm. a vehicle and, the, and i think that's what they used for um like the audrey 2 puppet there was a mm. lot of like automobile um engineers right. figuring out the right yeah. material and it's so funny that that mm. level of of you know money and power and and talent you know it all comes together yeah. to create these like super effective visuals yeah so we do have a, a question here from another yeah. Sparky John, one of our community members, who says, do you think that the film's release would have helped if Paul Rubens had been publicised as being in the phone, uh, not in the phone, in the film, um, appearing in the credits and publicity materials instead of as Paul Mal or pa Paul Mal? Um, Paul Mal. I don't know. I, I, I think, I mean, not to be beautiful on this, but I think it would have been, if they, they would have had to have said Pee Wee Herman for most people. Yeah. Um... I'm not. I'm not sure how that would have uh, how that would have played out. Um, Looking at all the creatures now uh, on display here for him, this is always a very iconic moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, memorable moment oh, for the kids. Right where he gets the NASA hat eaten. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. One of these used to really scare me. The one that was like a, a skeletal kind of chicken inside the glass jar with the smoke. Yeah. yeah, the Phoenix stars from the Pixar elliptic. Is that that's the one? They're all pretty freaky, except for the one that he forms a, a bond with. Yeah, except for the Puck Man, the potato bug, but suddenly, suddenly jumps forward, snarling, grabs David's NASA cap. A tiny that's right, he's just eating. Oh, it. and a oh, tiny yeah. lion. Oh, and then. Uh... Which was my burp. Person, uh, That's your burp, wasn't it? That was my burp. Yeah, they got me to they got me to do a big nasty burp on. <laughs> when we went into do the voiceovers, and then... that's great. They might have toned it down, like uh, lowered it. You know, the octaves a little they bit. Because... Yeah. Now this is yeah. this is one thing that I can't believe Disney wouldn't do now is where you've got the little puck mare in that they would now that would be merchandised like you couldn't believe. Oh yeah. yeah, he'd be yeah. There'd, there'd be certain little it. ones that go on your shoulder, and you can control and. Oh, absolutely. Well, there was a remote control one on the set. Mm. It wasn't. Um, I mean, it was pretty um, old school back then, but it had a had a cool wire that would go down the back of my arm, and then to a battery pack in my pocket, and then they could make him move just basic movements. A little remote control one, but now, I mean, yeah, you could do all sorts of cool stuff with it. So. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I would love to do just for the love of it and uh, work with some people who are now filmmakers and and love the movie. We've had talks, you know, I've talked to a, a writer friend and about uh, writing a really cool sequel. Cool. Uh, where Battle David of the Navigator. Gonna, Re Re well, Return of the Navigator. Something. I mean, but it wouldn't be. It, David would be in it. You know, I'd be grown up and have a have a daughter, a figure, uh, and she uh, somehow goes on an adventure. It's, you know, it's, it's got some pretty cool ideas though. Well, there's some relevant there's stuff happening with uh, all the the uh, UFO phenomena has been like kind of blowing up in recent years, and and people's yep. claims of you know all these ET encounters. I was wondering if you had any thoughts about that stuff too. I don't have a lot. I mean, I, um, as far as whether or not there's other life in the universe, I mean, how could there not be? 
I just, I just don't see. <laughs> but when we were kids, how, when we were how kids, that was a common, like it was really common that 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 was kind of an absurd thought. Now it's not. But when we were young, it, 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 it we we weren't as blatantly saying that, you know. Right. Yeah. And then there was the whole thing of uh, of how they actually released the footage, I guess, or the, that and and admitted that yes, there is. But who yeah. is it? The guy from yeah, the, 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 amazing but stuff. It was all during. It was all during COVID, so nobody really paid attention to the fact that, <laughs> right. that they were saying, "Oh yeah, there is aliens." Um, yeah, we got. A- by the way, we got aliens. But yeah. make sure to wear your masks, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, were, so it's like everybody was kind of so focused on COVID, right? Like, right. Oh, it's there is yeah, aliens. Yeah. Strategy. Oh. Yeah. Here we go. We're just seeing the scene where he's going to try and get the uh, the map, the charts out of your out of your mind, and it goes a bit wrong. Right. Well. Oh. That's it, Davy. Whoa, I can't believe this. I must have got some stuff out of your brain that has nothing to do with flying the ship. You <laughs> sound just like a human. No, <laughs> that dumb dog will never learn to catch frisbee. This can't be happening. Two all be patty special sauce with his cheese pickles on his own of us makes you bun. Ha 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 You got Pee-wee down pretty good. Uh, it's like, oh, you'll never be yeah. If you want to learn to swim, you got to jump in the water. You geek, weasel, dork, butt face, scuzz bucket. Yeah. Fun, what fun, I think is tremendous on your performance here is that even as a child, you weren't acting against the performance we're hearing now, yet it sounds so, it's so well done. It doesn't hmm. sound like it's two separate people not having a conversation. Right. Yeah. Um, the design too was really effective in creating just an eyeball that could emote you know with like like these two basically yeah. two versions of his emotions but it's, it's the way they the way they bring it in and out is really effective yeah oh without a doubt yeah the, they did a great job i mean and, and even expressions with such a limited palette of movement uh right yeah could, the design was really good get he could get mad and then shut his, you know, he's like, okay, talk to the hand, buddy. I'm not, right? Or, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, then he'd be it, like, oh, like, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Did I thing. mean, it's, it's probably worth for those of us who are watching who don't know, and of course, I hope most of us do, that one of the main puppeteers on this was, of course, Tim Blaney, who is the guy behind Johnny mm-hmm. Five. That's so, right. you know, real yeah. master of kind of, ex- I mean, Johnny Five again has expressive eyes in a similar kind of way where he's, his eyes don't move oh, much, right. but the uh, periphery does to express things. Yeah, Johnny Five was very effective. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. And this I mean, both for... Tim, T- Tim, and Tony did all sorts of stuff. I I couldn't miss them all, but they've probably done so many of puppets that we that we all know. Yeah, uh, you know. So, yeah. so we had a, another question earlier from uh, yeah. Sparky John, one of our uh, producers, about. Um, is it your stunt double when you had a stunt double when you were in uh, when you were abroad and they didn't speak English? Is that true? Apparently, that's true. I uh, it was something I learned from the documentary as well that they did a couple of scenes with a Norwegian boy uh, where he's sliding back and forth in the chair, um, and uh, and yeah, the translation would get a little bit lost, and so. He'd want him to go right and then he'd want him to go left and they had to, <laughs> had to work it out. But um, yeah. That's kind I, of cool. Yeah. Cool. Were funny. you of the age where yeah. you had uh, limited hours shooting the movie as a child? And you had to have school yeah, on think, set? Um, I did have a tutor who came with me, Jan. She was awesome. Um, uh, I think there was limited hours. I'm not sure exactly how many. Uh, back then, it was a little bit different, probably a little bit more lenient. Uh, but they treated me really well. Yeah. Um, I never. Uh, yeah, I've never felt overworked, or I. I mean, I maybe part of it was just because it was such a fun, fun thing. Uh, yeah. My connection with Randall was really strong. Uh, was, you know, all the crew. I. I remember. I still have a hat that uh, mm-hmm. the sound guy, I'm pretty sure it was the sound guy, gave me the coolest 
like this cool safari hat that he had for you know staying cool and I don't know I just I really connected with everybody on the set from from uh, catering to you know to the you know. Awesome. Right. And now we're seeing just the scene with the, the parent, all the parents and your older brother in the home that's not as nice. And Carolyn's trying to explain to them uh, what's right. uh, going on with you. And then so he's up there in, in a spaceship. Oh, that's it. <laughs> David's up there flying around right now, you know. <laughs> it's crazy because it's, it's kind of like, yeah, he's appeared at the same age after eight years. We'll believe whatever you tell us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny, if you listen a little bit later, they're watching Price is Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he's like, and no, you win an exciting trip to Canada. (laughs) (laughs) so funny. And I've I've always wondered if Randall put that in there because that's funny. It was interesting in the documentary hearing them talk about how they had to call you out on certain accents to, to get different takes because your Canadian would come through sometimes. It would, yeah. Yeah, I'd I'd worked on it a little bit um, in Runaway. They, I definitely had the house house uh, and uh, going on. Um, I uh, I pretty much eliminated it now, especially uh, you know wanting to act and, and do and do things now, get an agent and all that. You have to have the the generic American accent. I don't think. I mean, I've been told I don't really sound like. A Canadian anymore specifically yeah uh, but I definitely had to work on it yeah yeah that's interesting there we go now you've just been to Tokyo briefly and now you're flying oh, back right. over the oh yeah Pacific. Tokyo over Tokyo this isn't Florida this is Miami <laughs> Tokyo take us back up I'm just like yeah. like you take us back up come on because <laughs> I'm another like great... I'm just like so mad at him. <laughs> There's another great reason you can tell this isn't actually a Disney film during the production stage is you're flying over Florida and at no point do you accident accidentally swing past the Magic Kingdom or something like that as if it was a proper Disney production if you're flying through Florida. Yeah. Well, was but in 86, was there even... Disney World's 50 Disney? years old this year. Right, but in Florida, there was one... I, I think it was yeah, there. 1971. Yeah, 71. Oh! I remember yeah. we were taken there. Too. Oh, okay, never... cool. Well, that's Thanks good to know. Me. Yeah. Like I said, I would have imagined oh. if it had been a proper Disney production at the time, as, as was so common, you would have accidentally done some, that's the that's the magic kingdom. We can't go there, even though I really right. want to. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, before, before the finding know. finding Dory or uh, finding Nemo was twenty thousand leagues under the sea ride. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just I went recently a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, to, to a uh, Florida one or uh, to California? California. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I haven't been to Florida yet, but so I'd like to. There we go. We're just <sighs> seeing now uh, that. So we're just seeing the guys in the car. Who are all uh, oh, yeah. kind of shocked? The shot of it in the rearview mirror is great. Where you see the ship kind of just. Oh yeah. <laughs> Please try and give us directions because we get lost easy. So that Lord! shot, for example, so, where you were near the car, was that shot on location, and you were hanging out sort of one of the models, sort of one of the sh- ships on a crane? Yeah, it's yep, a crane. That was definitely that was a ship on a crane. We're out in the middle of you know some some crossroad somewhere. Um, the blonde girl in the front seat, mm-hmm. uh, I guess they needed um, a fourth uh, a fourth geek. <laughs> and that was our first AD. Uh, she, uh, that they dressed her up as an 80s kid and threw her. Oh, that's fun. Seat. I think somebody couldn't show up or we, or, you know, they, I don't know, yeah. lost an extra somewhere. And they're like, okay, we need someone. Are you, are you doing it? It's like, okay. Sure. That's great. Yeah. Because I think, sport. I think. The thing for the audience to remember is the exterior shots and the shots where you're on location but hanging out the ship were shot in America, but all the shots inside the ship, you were in Norway at the time filming them. That's right. Yep. Yep. But anything where I'm peering out the front of the ship, that was all in Florida because that was the actual ship. (laughs) We're just seeing the scene with you listening to the Beach Boys (laughs) and you're dancing, flying the ship. Oh, yeah. 
Round, round, get around, I get around. Get the, um, when you were filming it, one question I do have is with the, um, you got sort of controls you're sort of waving your hands, holding on. Were mm-hmm. you actually moving them or were they being moved by puppeteers and you were just keeping your hands on them? Do you remember? Oh, no, they were movable. They, they would come up out of the ship and then, yeah. and then kind of, you know, like they actually did that movement. And then once they were set in place, like, I think maybe they had control of them so that they could slowly kind of put them down, but it was all from underneath, from, like, pulleys and gears underneath. Mm. Once they were set in place, then I would just move them, and they would move. Oh, wow. So it, it was, again, one of those things where it made it really uh, realistic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, was wasn't talking really, to I wasn't sure if it was, you, you were told, put your hands on it, and we'll move it around for you. We'll yep. puppeteer yep. you. No. Yep. Yeah, you know, again, it's that it's that dream come true element where you know, you, little kid controlling an alien spacecraft, and it looks oh, real. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're buying everything you're seeing. Yeah, so cool. I was just talking to an old friend recently, and he he was telling me, um, so he was a Vitamix uh, representative for years. Yeah. You know, those big blenders, and so he'd be out doing showcases and have two of these big blenders, and um, and and he'd always put his hands on them and then talk to the people. Pretend like he was flying a ship, right? <laughs> These are the best blenders ever. They will take you anywhere you need to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, we've just seen the scene now where you were at the uh, the gas station. Um, that's yeah. right. Yeah, Ding. the gas gas station, and they're just yeah, that's that they? kind Thank man you. gives you yeah, change. Thank you. <laughs> yes, who was rusty? He was one of the grips. Oh, um, cool. I, so again, big, big owl you know, rusty, I mean. Yeah, yeah, his name was Rusty. It was one of the grips. They were like, okay. Well, he nailed it. He nailed it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> totally great. did. Rusty's I great. Mean, <laughs> it's one of those moments where the silence speaks speaks louder than anything, right? right. And then, of course, at the very end, I mean, he's just like, I just love some of the. Some uh, of the I, would, I, would have, I would have thought a three day casting process at least. Uh, yeah. I love the fact that dad, the dad just says to the kids, get away from there. They don't have insurance in a place yeah, like this. They don't have any insurance in a place like this. Come on, get out from under there. Yeah, I don't know. That, <laughs> that Indian village won't win any awards, but that, that flying saucer is first rate. <laughs> How long did it take to build something like that? There's some really funny lines in this, you know, really. Yeah, there's there really are. Funny, there's some funny spots. And, and that, I mean, that's a great one. Get, get out from under there, kids. They don't have insurance in a place like this. It's, <laughs> yeah well levity is so important in something like this especially for something to have the disney logo on it and everything it's 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 yeah. a it's it's where it needs to be funny it's funny and where it needs to be serious it's very serious and it just kind of hits all yeah around. it's a great balance right hmm. there we go oh we go you're getting yourself a nestle crunch bar out the yep out the machine the which of course is machines i mean how many People even remember those pulley, yeah. pull, pull machines. Yeah, that's like gone I've, now. I remember yeah. showing my age in not that I ever, not that I do smoke, but I remember as a kid seeing cigarette machines that were like that, self service. Yeah. Well, I was about to say, I think that maybe there might still be one in a couple of hotels down down in the states somewhere. Yeah, you occasionally see the cigarette ones, but even that yeah. is pretty rare. I mean, I mean, uh, pay phones. Are, are rare. I mean, here in LA, oh, yeah. it's yeah. hard to find them. Yeah. There's, uh, there's barely any here either. I, uh, I was somewhere and I was like, oh my God, there's a pay phone. I, I went up, I picked it up. I was like, does it actually work? It works. Yeah, so play with it. Oh, it's nostalgic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and again, this is the, the crazy thing that people may aren't appreciated in this. Apart from, I love this scene where Max has got his little arms and he's holding the map. Um, <laughs> eating a Nestle <laughs> Crunch bar. <laughs> well, it's the fact they obviously had to take one, if not several, Nestle Crunch bars to Norway for you to eat because they don't have Nestle Crunch bars oh, over right. there. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, back and in the day, the famous... if if you if you've got a Nestle Crunch bar, is Nestle like paying for the movie? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, because mm-hmm. uh, to get licensing to say rice for San Francisco tree, ding ding. Or was it just? I think back then it was more like, oh yeah, they'll just, just kind of 
I don't know, product placement or something. Product placement. Yeah, because you mentioned McDonald's earlier right. too in a cut scene, which yeah. often would put money into projects like this. Yeah. That, that was above my pay grade. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't, you don't <laughs> hear too much about that. We have a, another question here from Onzi in our community. Um, he loves the movie as it is, but is there anything you would have changed about the movie, the story, the characters, or shooting if you could go back and change it and alter something about it? Hmm. Well, I, th- I, I honestly think it flowed pretty good. Um, I thought the twist of running into Carolyn at the end or uh, was kind of neat, but the way that it turned out, you know, the kind of resolution with the brother, the connection with the family, the back to, um, oh, I don't think there's much. I would yeah, do. it might be a perfect Maybe, movie. maybe it's just I, I wouldn't have cut my hair so that yeah. there wouldn't be that little <laughs> bit of wig. <laughs> so That's very there cool. Wouldn't be, yeah, but besides that, I mean, it's. Uh, it holds up pretty well. It's pretty, it's I think pretty it fantastic. Great. It really does. They're watching the prices right now. They're all there. Everyone's into yeah. it. Here it and comes. Your brother, yeah. And your brother's lighting what are potentially expired fireworks on the roof of the house. Yeah. Oh, man, come on. <laughs> Do they say it? They're going to say it's an exciting trip to Canada. I'm assuming these are supposed to be the fireworks that we do see getting lit at the end of the movie in the rest of them because that 4th of July never happened, that party, That's because right. you went missing. They are eight-year-old fireworks, right? Yeah. That's why, that's why most of them are dead. Um, and uh, Matt was talking in the, in the documentary about this scene. He said, you know, I was up on that roof, and it was a little sketchy. It was a little sketchy. Was it say, was windy, it and it was good. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look particularly a safe thing to be climbing on that roof lighting fireworks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. that's an interesting part of the documentary. There it goes. Yeah. And the, th- Ooh, the thing is, it's not, estab- it's, it's not established at what point your character is returned. Yes, it's eight years, but we don't know if it's eight years, eight weeks, eight years and a month, whatever. But we can assume it's not the 4th of July when you return to when you're returned at the beginning of the movie. Interesting. Because otherwise, yeah. the fireworks, at the, if he'd returned to you eight years to the day, the fireworks might have been a problem. Yeah, that's a they good point. Would've. Oh, that's a that's a really interesting one because you'd think that, that it would have been eight years to the day because because of the two point two or four point four solar hours. Um, There's a natural association with fireworks and Fourth of July, so the audience is probably going perfect, but then not thinking <laughs> they would be everywhere. Right? <laughs> yeah, just give me a signal I can see from the air. Yeah. yeah. And half yeah. the city's lit up with fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's oh, that's cool. Okay, yeah, a, okay. A, that might be a hole. That might be the one hole. No, it's yeah. not a hole. It actually makes sense because you just assume it's not. Because they again, don't say. Yeah, they don't say it is right. It, yeah. yeah, they don't specifically say it's the fourth of July, right? Well, yeah. although when I'm in the cop car, that um, could be they're the like, and what's what's the date today? And I'm like, July fourth, and the year 1978. And then they look at each other. Right, right. Well, that's oh, a cool, little cool. allusion to the fact yeah. that, oh, but okay. And by that, then that night was July 4th. But the you next been day, I go to week, NASA. Or the day, yeah, days later, yeah. I go to NASA. So it's got to be July 6th or 8th or something like that. Yeah. A right? uh, couple, right. couple of days later. So that, so there we go. We, we filled the gap. We, we, well, let's, um, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll say that it was. July 11th, and the reason we'll say it's July 11th is it's the anniversary today of the day David went back in time. Okay. Perfect. Right. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, that oh. scene where you have to say goodbye to the family. I don't belong here now. I love yeah. you. No, David, no. Oh, yeah, I always forget about this part. Yeah, this is. I think this is where we're starting to see some of the scenes that were put in afterwards because your hair's changing a little bit between shots. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. the only time the only time my hair is different is, is in the inside of the spaceship. Yes, you're inside the spaceship. There's a couple of shots where it's slightly different. Oh, right. It's cut okay. in between. Yeah. 
it was a few yeah. just a few months a few months later and i think it shows up especially because there's that kind of blue screen behind me yeah, yeah. So it kind of it, it kind of accentuates had i been in the in the you know in the ship but most of the scenes uh yeah i've got the screen behind me which really kind of makes it stand out so. it's fine it's, it's oh, and it's good oh, yeah. that era it, getting that green screen that that yeah uh, you know, that rotoscoping yeah. that effect you know that was challenging back then it's it's yeah. taken for granted now how mm -hmm. difficult that was to light those those kinds of moments we had to Here make we... it look you know yeah and it was projected so it was like, oh. Here we go. Lizard Man says something, and it's true. And I'm thank you, Lizard Man, because I'm viewing the movie in a new way now. It's also a road trip movie. Hmm. Yeah, he said every road trip is. has to end sometime. Yeah, oh, I like that. I like that. I found it fascinating the Man, about eh? the aliens that are that he's uh, he's working for. That that element of the story has got yeah. my imagination running wild. You remember Lizard Man from the, the, the old, <laughs> I don't know if I should go there, but the old Cheech and Chong movie, uh, Nice Dreams, when mm -hmm. Stacey Keach turns into the Lizard Man and Pee Wee Herman yeah. is in oh. that. And he's like, oh, hey, Mr. Lizard Man, would you like to buy a hamburger? And <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. that crazy Lizard Man in the back of the station wagon, right? Stacey Keach is the Lizard Man. So. And there we are. We're seeing you waking <laughs> up back in 1978, laying in the gully. Oh, right. a lot of cool visual and the train movies. and the train's going by right the yeah. Train, yeah which yeah. which makes it oh he's right back to the exact seconds that they left whereas when i woke up the first time eight years later there's no train so it's definitely a different time yeah but, right yeah. oh and here we go, go. and you're going back and the into throwing your... i throw in the pebble across the tracks and that's not me that's the sandal this is you now going you've gone back to your parents nice house the old house right and they're in the boat with the uh, fireworks yep. and your brother i love you man yeah. yeah it's a real warm feeling i love i love that moment where you see that they're, they're just like the timing isn't even there's no question as to where you've been this is come on <laughs> yeah totally they're like hey come on let's take it out right it's like yeah it's great it's crazy adventure it's pretty cool pretty cool are you mad at me? No, Jeff, I love you too. I'm like, what? What's going on here? You must have been tempted to push the push um, him into the water at some point when you were well, you know. yeah. <laughs> So, and uh, and by that, uh, I think that maybe that's where uh, Jeff's turning point would be, right? Because mm. David comes back, he forgives him for pushing him and scaring him and all this stuff. And, um, maybe the big brother. Yeah. Maybe that. Maybe if your if your sequel does happen, we can see what became of Jeff. If Jeff did go down the jerk route with David still being there, or if he did, or if he you know turned into a nice guy, as we saw without David. Well, you were doing, thought, uh, yeah. Um, so the you were doing Donnie, must be you were doing Donnie and... Darko before Donnie Darko with this because you were showing that by not being there, someone's life turned out better. Right. <laughs> yeah, now you're making up with uh, your brother on my oh, okay yeah and the parents are like uh, what is happening this is yeah what's going on here happened before yeah and he shares and an so alien the... from another world with his brother which is a big moment <laughs> yeah <laughs> how would you explain that the... to your parents well in the <laughs> sequel yeah in the sequel, that would be their, you know, Jeff and David's little secret, right? So here in the in the um, in the script, David's like, "No, Jeff, I love you too." And then it cuts to a McDonald's night, and the station wagon pulls in and parks, and they and they stop, and that's where David finds walks up to the young girl, and yeah, you don't care. Yeah, yeah. Did that, that sounds get... like integrated advertising. That sounds like yeah. send the people to McDonald's after the movie. To me, Is that you know? scene actually <laughs> actually shot though the McDonald's scene with you where you met what her as a you was it just um, in the script? I don't think we shot that. No, because there's a bit in the doc as well about Carrie, um, you know, auditioning for Young Carolyn, and uh, and then getting a part of Jennifer Bradley. 
Um, I don't Foster, think that we yeah. ever. Oh, what I, fireworks what I want to say is, the night thing, so we're just coming to the end of the movie now. Well, we come on the end credits. I just want to thank you, Joe, for joining us. This has been so much fun to chat on Facebook, our Discord community. They've been having a blast. They've been having such a great time. Um, we've got people saying, Carla, one of our producers is saying, Joey was amazing in this film. Please thank Joey for giving us this lovely gift of a movie. And we've got uh, Sparky John saying thank you so much to uh, Lon and especially to Joey for joining us today. It's been absolutely fantastic and they wish you all the best in the future. We've got Onzi saying thank you, Joey, for giving us the treat of a watch party. I can't believe we're the same age. I can't wait to see what's next for you in your career and life journey. Um, Jedi Wizard, I forgot how good this film was. Calbot saying thank you to everyone. F uh, Phonic saying thank you, Joey. Um, Lizard Man saying thank you so amazing you could share everything i see matty you rock joey hannah rose artist oh, saying this movie is better than i remember and she's still crushing on you so there we go so that's Aww. absolutely absolutely awesome so joey i want to turn the, give you the floor for a few minutes as we're finishing off today um what have you got in the pipeline what's going on where can are you doing conventions or anything like that i am i uh, so first of all thank you all so much Thank you for the wonderful comments. Thank you for joining us. It was incredible. You know, thank you, Andrew, Lon. Uh, I, I, I'm really glad that we made this happen. It was great. Um, and um, so I am starting to do conventions again. I uh, look forward to... So I've got Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, that's coming up October 9th and 10th. I, I, and then Manchester in December. And it's, uh, they're, they're both around the same date, sorry, like uh, December 10th, uh, 10th, 11th. Anyway, you can find them. I'll be posting more on, on Instagram, et cetera. But so I've got a couple of those Comic Cons. Um, then the following year, Southampton will be happening. Um, and some stuff coming up in the, in the States as well, uh, which aren't confirmed yet, but we will see. And, um, and I've just been uh, working on some acting stuff here locally, been involved in a couple of really cool little feature films, uh, just local filmmakers, you know, making movies because we love to make movies. Um, and so I will keep those updated and posted on uh, on Instagram as well. They're pretty pretty cool projects. One was a little dark, definitely dark, and it was a hard character for me to play because I just didn't agree with the guy at all. But uh, that's what that's what acting's all about. So that's really neat. And I'm hoping um, hoping slash planning to uh, work with uh, filmmaker, writer, director Ryan Kruger. Uh, from South Africa, he released a movie recently called Fried Berry. It's a really cool, already become a cult classic, kind of cool alien abduction, mind-bending horror type thing, which is really fun. And his next film, we really want to work on together. So um, everything goes well. We will. I'll be. Uh, I'll be making a movie soon, and, and just kind of go from there. Well, you I'm said. Uh, you said Vivarium. Um. Oh, uh, Fried. Uh, Fried berry. Fried berry. Okay, gotcha. There we Fried go. berry. Yeah. So we've been doing really well in the festivals and it's it's quite a quite a ride that movie. It's on Shutter yeah. AMC. He actually was able to put me in a little cameo in it. We we wanted to uh, he wanted me to have a, a part in it and, oh, and cool. COVID hit and I couldn't travel. So he took a clip from the documentary and put me on a TV during <laughs> one oh, of the scenes, great. right? Nice. Berry's nice. like flipping through the the screen and and there up up I come on the screen so it was, uh, that was great I really appreciate that absolutely fantastic we've got yeah. a couple of things from our community here as well we've got Sparky John saying he's going to try and get to one of the UK conventions to say hello to you and I probably will do the same I'll keep an eye and I'll maybe say hello to you in person Joey at some point that'll be wonderful Sounds good and uh, Onzi again legendary member of our community is saying uh, will you be doing any fan expos in Toronto anytime soon. Hmm. I don't have uh, anything in the works, but I um, I will look because I would love to come to the East Coast for sure. 
And um, Icy Matty says, please, please, please come to Australia as soon as it's clear to come. Oh, I would love to. That's another one definitely on my list. So. Do, do you come back to L.A. Uh, regularly or, or is L.A. kind of. Uh, no, I well, actually I'm going to be down there in September. Um, I'll be down for a couple of weeks. I've got family down there and also just networking with some great film friends and saying hello. And I'm going to a three-day Pearl Jam festival. In Ohio. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's so so King cool. DeLeon and, and Eddie and, and Pearl Jam and all sorts of other amazing bands. So uh, I've had tickets for a couple of years and now it's finally back on. So I will be down there in, in September. Okay, cool. That is yeah. so, so awesome. And I just want to quickly say again, thank you to Lon for joining me as a co-host today. How wonderful to have you back with us, Lon. And I believe you've got a podcast you're working on. Um, well, actually, what I'm doing is I'm launching a uh, post-production company. So I do sound design, music, editing. Um, and I've been, I've been basically an, an independent filmmaker for many years. And I'm finally getting to a point where I'm like harnessing my, my craft for the Ooh. sake of my business. So <laughs> I'm going to be launching that uh, relatively soon. And uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that how wonderful i'm sure we'll have you back very soon well everybody that's been the flight to the navigator you. watch party for in search of tomorrow we will be back next week with our in search of darkness community and we will be carrying on with the second week of our summer of popcorn which you can't see here because of the wonderful there we go i had made some popcorn earlier uh, and we'll be watching fright night so that's going to be amazing we will cool. see you all then but yeah until then uh, Joey and Lon, thank you so much for joining us. So to everybody out there, stay safe, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. See you later, Navigators. <laughs> Thanks for joining Bye. us, guys.